JBN, we keep you informed. Man killed at Elf Center entrance. One man was shot and killed at the entrance of the Nanneville Elf Center along Mountain View Avenue on Tuesday morning. According to information from the police's corporate communications unit, the deceased, 32-year-old Kenroy Dixon of a Roxborough Kingston 3 address, was riding a bicycle about 11 a.m. when two men on foot approached him and opened fire. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Several patients, including women and the children, covered in fear as they hastily left the premises. A knapsack that he was carrying was searched, and the police found a Beretta 9mm pistol containing 18 rounds. Residents in the community said that they are disheartened by this incident. We don't know him, you know, but him just come from out of the clinic when it happened. When people are deal all around we, we have peace in this area. We always have party and because we're peaceful, we always get permit. But this is going to mash up our thing now, one resident said. The clinic was closed shortly after. One senior nurse related what happened. Everybody was traumatized. We had to bend down when shots started to fire. As old as I am, I the first member witness something like this. Everybody is shaken, she said. The halfway tree police are investigating the murder. The shooting occurred just outside the margins of the violence plague Kingston Eastern Police Division, in which a state of emergency has been in effect since Sunday. Cabinet approved contracts totaling $1.7 billion for the provision of security and related services at health facilities under the jurisdiction of the Southeast Regional Health Authority for three years. The signing ceremony was held on January 3. Schalke Electronic Security has been assigned to the Kingston and St. Andrew Health Department and all health centers across the corporate area at a cost of $348.2 million. Double murder in St. Elizabeth. Police are investigating the gun murder of two men in Mountainside, South St. Elizabeth, late Wednesday. Reports say the two men were in a sports bar when men armed with guns entered and shot them. The killers left in a motor car which was later found abandoned. Police investigators say they are following very strong leads. The double murder follows another gun-related killing in Carisbrook, close to Magotty, in northern St. Elizabeth on Monday. A 48-year-old farmer, Lennox Williams, has been identified as the victim in the Carisbrook shooting, which occurred at a shop in the community. Police say there have been four murders in St. Elizabeth since the start of the year. A taxi operator shot dead in Augustown, St. Andrew. A taxi operator was shot and killed in Augustown, St. Andrew, on Tuesday night. The deceased has been identified as Kenroy Taylor of Gold Smith Villa in Augustown. Reports are that about 7.30 p.m., Taylor arrived home and alighted from his vehicle and was allegedly pounced upon by four men who had been hiding in a nearby gully. Taylor was shot several times by the men who then fled the area. The taxi operator was later pronounced dead at hospital. Investigations are ongoing into the incident. Man dies after a motorcycle catches fire following St. James' collision. A man died along the Rose Hall Main Road in St. James on Wednesday afternoon after being hit from his motorcycle which burst into flames. The man was reportedly burnt beyond recognition. We sprayed the bike with water but it was just too late. He seemed to be still breathing but eventually he could see had taken his last breath, said a witness who was at the scene. The incident happened about 12.45 p.m. at the stoplight at the Montego Bay Convention Center. It is reported that the motorcyclist had just left the Flankers community and was heading towards Rand Park in Rose Hall. On reaching the stoplight at the convention center, a truck was reportedly making a U-turn when it collided with the motorbike. The impact reportedly caused the bike to burst into flames, which spread to the rider. Man fatally shot by a cop in Kingston. A Taurus 9mm pistol with a magazine containing six 9mm cartridges was seized on one man fatally shot during a confrontation with the police on Elgin Street, Kingston 14 on Wednesday. The deceased has been identified as 27-year-old Cedric Thomas of Albert Street, Kingston 14. The Denham Town Police report that about 3.10 p.m., Thomas reportedly shot and injured a man. According to the police, while fleeing the scene with a gun in his hand, he allegedly challenged the policeman and was shot. He was pronounced dead at hospital. The matter was reported to the Inspectorate of Constabulary and the Independent Commission of Investigations, which have launched probes. Cops vowed to take down 12 gangsters. 12 unnamed gangsters are known the police's radar and will be placed before the court for breaches of the anti-gang legislation. Addressing an awards banquet for justices of the peace, JPs, and the lay magistrates in Montego Bay, St. James on Saturday, 
Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson, said that the move against the gangsters was part of the drive to bring violence producers to justice and remove their influence from communities across the island. We have seen convictions. Previously, we couldn't get them. We have another one gang-related case that started just last week, and I have 12 gangsters lined up to come, Anderson told attendees at the banquet. We have a large part of several gangs in custody, awaiting trial at the moment, the largest being 50 members of one gang and two gang leaders. According to the commissioner, the police force and other law-abiding citizens are awaiting the verdict from the first gang case in the court where 19 members are still on trial. You should get that verdict in March, stated Anderson. When you start to do that, that's what's going to make the difference with the organized crime, highly violent gang culture that exists, according to Anderson. In addition to suppressing crime, which is the primary role of the anti-gang legislation, the state also has to address the gang situation, which is driving crime and violence. One of the first measures of the criminal justice, suppression of criminal organizations legislation, had just suppressed gang activities. We still have to go and deal with these intractable criminal organizations that are quite willing to destroy people's lives, noted Anderson. In their first test of the anti-gang legislation, the police did not reap much success. In October last year, 19 alleged members of the Westmoreland-based Dexter Street Gang walked free from the Supreme Court in Kingston after the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions withdrew the case against them, which was not well received by the then leadership of the Westmoreland Police, the so-called Dexter Street Gangsters, who were first taken before the Supreme Court in 2017 on charges of being part of a criminal organization consisted of four women and four members of one family. Jamaican workers earn over U.S. $300 million from U.S. seasonal employment programs. Minister of Labor and Social Security Shaheeni Robinson says Jamaican workers participating in the United States agricultural and hospitality employment programs have generated upwards of an estimated U.S. $300 million in earnings over the past five years. Additionally, she said the number of people taking up jobs in both sectors has risen to an average nearly 7,000 per annum. The significance of the United States agricultural and hospitality employment programs cannot be overstated. The impact on the local economy is striking, Robinson said. She was speaking during a recent awards dinner for overseas farm and hospitality workers at the Miller Braco Resort in Trelawney. Robinson said numerous families have benefited from Jamaica's participation in both programs upwards of the past 50 years, noting that the children and grandchildren of many of these individuals have gone on to distinguish themselves in various academic, professional, and vocational pursuits. She indicated that under the agricultural component, workers are dispatched by the ministry to take up employment opportunities in several states, including Vermont, New York, and Washington. Robinson further noted that while males were the sole participants in this area over the years, the trend was broken in 2017 when the first group of 64 females took up employment at Gebers Farms in Brewster, Washington. She said the women who joined 600 men who were already working there were mainly involved in harvesting and picking cherries during their stint. Meanwhile, Robinson is assuring that the U.S. federal laws and regulations provide significant safeguards for foreign workers, particularly people involved in agriculture. She explained that the provisions are aimed at protecting individuals from exploitation and abuse, as well as ensuring that United States workers are not negatively impacted by the employment of their foreign counterparts. Among the potential negative factors the minister noted is downward pressure on wages associated with the recruitment of temporary workers. Apart from wages, employers are required to pay the cost of transportation, such as air travel from Jamaica to a port of entry in the United States, and then ground transportation to the farm, the minister added. Robinson contended, however, that agricultural and hospitality programs continue to make a significant contribution to the development of Jamaica's economy. Bus taxi operators play cat and mouse with cops as lawmen look to clean up city. Head of Area 4 Assistant Commissioner of Police Devon Watkiss says cops have implemented measures to bolster law and order in the major commercial areas of the corporate area. However, downtown Kingston remains a challenge. According to Watkiss, since January, tighter reins have been placed on vendors, 
Lodermen and coastal bus operators in sections of Halfway Tree and Papini in St. Andrew with their block roadways as they are soliciting customers and commuters. Downtown Kingston, however, remains a stifling mixture of unruly vendors, robot taxis and congested roadways. And Watkiss says that the police have been working with the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, with hopes of speeding up the process. Halfway Tree was very congested and we have intervened in a direct way. And Halfway Tree is a place now that we can finally find places to walk. It is the same thing with Papine, said Watkiss. We have cleaned Papine and have put some order. You will now see taxis on a daily basis, lining up in an orderly manner. Some will deviate, but then they are quickly put back in line. We are also doing some of that in Crossroads, continued the senior policeman. We have been met with a little resistance downtown, but we continue to remove the eyesores and address the concerns. We will be working with the municipality to quietly restore some order to the city, he explained, noting that disorder breeds criminality, especially in congested areas. He said efforts will be made to resolve how vendors are treated as part of the reality of the municipality with regard to how they are regulated to observe public decency while at the same time providing themselves with an opportunity to make a living. Some people are vending authorizations and we are trying to recalibrate those with the municipality. Last week, the chaos downtown was evident around the St. William Grant Park where North, South and West parades Taxi operators engage in a game of cat and mouse with policemen daily. At one end, taxi operators plan the Mona Papine route on the commands of loadermen attempted to outrun patrolling cops last week. At another end, taxi operators and vendors caused gridlock that stretched almost the full length of West Queen Street. Sidewalks on Orange and Beckford Streets have been taken over by shoppers. At another end of St. William Grand Park, one Rollington Town taxi operator said that he and colleagues simply sit and rest during the periods that policemen, particularly bicycle patrols, are active in the space. He said he has been operating taxis for two decades. We have to watch them because we don't have any rest to park. He's here so the people them come so we have to find them. He said as one frustrated t truck driver, honked repeatedly for a taxi operator to acknowledge a green light at the intersection of Upper King Street. What case said that since the start of the year, the police have removed more than a dozen truckloads of rubble, inclusive of stalls which were causing congestions and eyesores in sections of the corporate area. In the meantime, he said the police and other agencies have also been removing stray dogs and cats from the space. These often cause injuries and harm to pedestrians, he argued. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.